been super busy so I just haven't had a chance to make myself look presentable but we're gonna just ignore that um so I'm just charging my iPad as well so um we're gonna be yes it is live um we're gonna have a little delay with the chat just for the beginning but um once we get into it it will be fine so we're doing a blue tie-dye drip cake and it just happens to have little footballs on it. I've done one similar for um, a Princess Risbra team, but they wanted it for QPR. So we're doing QPR little badges. They're not edible, they're just card badges. And then we've got um, these like edible sugar paper badminton prints. So we're going to like cut those out and then put them on it. Um, and then we've got the QPR, so I need to cut these out. And then we have some little t-shirts, which I've made out of fondant. So I just need to like take those out of the mould, but apart from that, so everything is pretty much prepped. We have to make some chocolate footballs, but apart from that, I'm actually quite organised today in terms of like the actual cake stuff. Um, Hello to everyone joining. So I've made the buttercream, so I'm just putting it in piping bags. So it's like this kind of like navy blue. Um, where do I get my sugar prints from? These were just from um, eBay. Um, I literally just typed in badminton prints on eBay. And I think they were like £2.50. They were really cheap. Um, so yeah, that's where I got them from. And they came, I think it took like three days for them to come, but I ordered them in advance. So I had like plenty of time for them to arrive. Cause things like sugar prints, cause they're not personalized. They just got to print them on sugar paper. Whereas if it's anything that's like personalized, then I would usually go on Etsy, but um, it was just like a standard print. So I thought it'd be fine to go on eBay, but they look really good. I just need to cut them out. So hopefully they will look good when we put them on the cake. All right. There we go, another bag. So, mm -mm -mm. right. Both our buttercreams are ready. It's got a white chocolate drip, so we're going to use white chocolate spread, so that's nice and easy. Um, I'm going to pan you down so that you'll be able to see the cake. And we got new fridges, which you would have seen in my birthday video. So I now have my cake stored in here, whereas I was storing them in my parents' fridge because our one was being like funny with all the temperatures so i had to start storing it in theirs but they've now got a new fridge so then it means that we've got their old one which the temperatures is fine on so now i can keep the cakes in there which i love so we've done a very rough um what do you call it crumb coat because i knew that it was going to be a thick layer of ombre so I didn't bother going too thick whereas if it's a smooth like single color then I usually go a bit thinner then I usually go a bit thicker on the crumb coat but because you, there's going to be such a thick layer for this tie dye because there always is um it means that you can go a bit thinner hello to all the new people joining so I've done quite a few of these cakes so most of you will know how to do it but basically you just pipe random blotches all over the cake and then blend it. It's one of the easier designs to do and it is very effective. So we're just going to pipe random blotches all over. Try not to do too much of one colour. So like white is fine because obviously white is a blending colour. But you don't want to, with like the blue, you don't want to do too much blue because it's always dominant. It always like just covers over the white. So whenever you're doing a colour, you always want to make sure that you put little of that. Because otherwise you'll lose all of the white and it's a lot harder. 
it's easier to add more color onto the white than it is to add white onto the color so um, you always want to make sure that you don't add too much right now we're just going to fill in the gaps so can you show us how you make your chocolate ganache i don't use chocolate ganache um and does ganache need to be refrigerated at all times i don't use ganache um for my drip i have used chocolate and oil um which is not ganache ganache is with cream i don't like using um ganache because obviously it's a cream so if you mix it with cream then it can't be left out the fridge for as long so it's just easier to use um either chocolate spread or chocolate and oil because then it doesn't affect its fridge time um so next one just wondering any advice for doing drip cakes because i can't decide on what to use for my drip um so i've kind of just answered that one you will see the drip in this so you'll be able to see how it works but i would say either use a spread so if you're doing biscoff use biscoff spread um don't use nutella because i always have issues with that i don't like using nutella i find it goes really thick and it doesn't drip but any other spread like milk chocolate spread biscoff white chocolate i find that they all seem to work fine um do you think it's more worth it to get a cricket and make your own or just buy from etsy um so it's not so much obviously you'll make money off of the ones that you make so that's helpful um but it's also the risk factor so like if you're ordering a topper on etsy there is the risk that it doesn't arrive or it arrives late so that's the reason why i like having a cricket because i always know that it's down to me to make it and if it's not made then obviously that's my fault um whereas i don't like the idea of relying on someone else because i've heard like I've read reviews and things where people say like a topper doesn't arrive. Obviously it's not every seller, but I do worry that I'll like pick one and then I'll not get it or there'll be issues with it if it's not right. Um, Cause there's also other people that have had things turn up wrong where it's like the wrong age or the wrong name. So it's just so much easier to make it yourself. And then you do earn a commission obviously cause if you make them yourself, then you earn the money that it costs. Whereas otherwise you're not, it doesn't really make a difference because you're paying the person and the customer is obviously going to pay you whatever it costs. So yeah, it doesn't really make a difference money wise because you either get the money yourself or you pay it to someone else to do it. It's more so the hassle. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot more hassle free I find. And yeah, I'm I'm a worrier, so I would just be worrying too much that things don't arrive. As it is, whenever I order on Etsy, I always order like four weeks in advance because I get so worried that things aren't going to arrive. So yeah, that's why I don't use it. But it just depends. And also it depends if you've got the money. Like if you don't have the money to buy a Cricut, then obviously it's not essential. But um, if you have the money, then I definitely think it's useful. my boyfriend's phone mine died but this is too important <laughs> that's quite funny um so i'm um i'm waiting for my phone to charge a little bit and then i can actually have the chat on my ipad which is always so much easier but i've only got one charger so it's very annoying Um, I'm just thinking, so 
this is the last cake that I've got this week. Um, and then I've got a wedding tomorrow. So I'll be like off my socials all day. Um, and then I've got one midweek next week. Um, and then I've got another two, I think at the weekend i'll have to double check so i will be doing lives for all of those i just thought i'd remind everyone because we've been doing a lot of lives recently i'm trying to do like as many as i possibly can basically i'm just going to check my phone battery right we've got 33 percent, so we're good just bring up the chat on my ipad so that it's just a lot easier so, come on. Right, perfect. Um, there we go. So, um, how much butter do you use when making? Buttercream for a four inch cake. Um, it's typically one block to crumb coat and then at least one and a half to um, decorate. So like that includes final coat. That includes the detail on the board because I obviously do a lot of covered boards. So that takes a lot of buttercream. Um, but yeah, typically it's like one to three blocks, I would say. Um, and then for four inch, this is four blocks of butter. Um, and then an eight inch is five usually. Um, it depends, if it hasn't got board covering, then obviously it uses a lot less, but if it's got a covered board, then that's easily another block of butter or half a block. Um, I love these lives. Oh, thank you, Mandy. Um, it's funny that you always go live when I also have an order. <laughs> it's so much fun to bake together. That is really cool. Um, I love the idea of people like watching because I'm like, I never really, f there's no one that does lives. Like there's two people that I watch on TikTok, um, but they haven't been going live recently. So like, I can't watch them. Um, but they always go live at like midnight. Um, they're really late people. Like, um, I think one of them's usually baking. I think maybe she has, I think she has like a daytime job, but she's usually decorating cakes until like 2am and then she gets up for work. I don't know how she does it, but, um, yeah, I always try and stay up to like watch her lives, but I just can't do it. It's too much. Like tonight I'm hoping to be done early because... I've got this wedding, so I need to go to bed by like 11. So we need to be done on this live by like 10 or like half 10, hopefully. Hopefully not too late. This Python bag is not me, there you go. Um, what's the secret to getting non-gritty buttercream? Yours always looks so perfect, want a slice right now? I See, I never get that. Like, and that's not me sounding like, um, like rude or anything. Like I, I genuinely just haven't experienced it. I find that you need to have your butter. Like I leave my butter out the night before. And then like, obviously I'm decorating in the evening. So I got it out at like 3 PM and then it's really soft. And I mean, really soft. And then I mix it and it's really like sloppy. And then I just add, um, because you've mixed it so fast, it's like really, really soft. So then I add all the icing sugar and I just add it until it's the right stiffness. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm not really, not really sure what else. Well, that's, that's done. So that's good. So that's done. I'm just going to smooth the top. Um, and we have plenty of buttercream for the top. So that's good.
There we go. So I'm going to just fridge that for a second because I don't want to shove my finger in it or something. So shove that in the fridge. Um, so because I want to do all the decorations, I think straight away, I'm going to make the footballs now um, because uh, yeah, I'm going to make these footballs now. Um, all the bakers in England can get really good butter. Cupcake Gemma uses French butter and Morrison stock it, but no one does. Um, what's that in... So I use 250 grams, so I've used all my butter, so I can't actually show you a block, but um, I personally don't think you need anything fancy. I just use, I have the wrapper, but I just use the Tesco's salted butter and that's it. That's all I use. Um, it's not like it's Lurpak or anything like that. I tried Lurpak before and I didn't really notice much of a difference, so for price wise i was like well I might as well get the tesco's one um but also tesco's is like the same price as the organic one it's the same price as another brand that they do in there i think it's like country life or something so i've tried loads of different butters i personally don't think it makes a difference um and also if it's if the tesco's one which is like tesco's brand which some people want to sway away from um it's the same price as branded ones so it doesn't really make any difference. Whereas like obviously Tesco value items are obviously cheaper than um, branded. But this Tesco's one is the same price as like organic and this country life that I usually get. Um, so if they don't have the Tesco's one, I'll get the, I think it's country life. But if they do have it, then I just get the Tesco's. But like I say, um, I haven't noticed she said it matters for cookies but not cakes. I think that's why I can't master cookies. I use Tesco's too. I think cookies is a bit of an art form because I have tried a lot of cookie recipes and although I liked all of them, I liked them all for different reasons. Like I love a bendy cookie that you get from a supermarket, but obviously most people don't buy those on like Etsy and stuff. They're like the chunky cookies, which I find just look a bit cakey. So I've never got them to the point where I was happy with them. So I just decided to leave it basically. Um, right, we're gonna go and melt this chocolate. So it's just cooking chocolate um, from Tesco's. So we're gonna melt that. I always find this melts really nicely. That's why I've just kind of stuck to it. Um, excuse the pile of rubbish behind me. So there you go. Um, we need a bowl. So I only need, I only need, I think it's four footballs. Um, and that's how many of the mold makes because it does other like ball um, molds in it. It does like rugby and stuff like that. So it's only got four spaces for footballs. So we're gonna do four cause that's what I used on the last one. Um, but, I think I would probably, I'd normally use 150 grams. So I'm gonna try that, hopefully it's enough. Um, 150 grams of chocolate that is. Um, I love a bendy cookie, so do I. Like I really like bendy cookies, but I never see anyone selling bendy cookies. Everyone's always selling stuff, but I really like a bendy cookie. I don't like a stuffed cookie. Um, I've had like, you know, the ones at Domino's, if anyone's had them. Um, they do like a stuffed cookie which you put in the microwave and I like it but it just doesn't feel like a cookie it feels like a cake so and I find that all the stuffed ones because they're so thick even when I bought them from other people I've always just thought that it's very like cake like um not that it's like spongy like it is cookie texture but just the fact fact that it's so thick I can never just, I can't get my head around it. So, and also I'm trying to move away from small items because unless it's easy for me to make, like really easy that I can do it with my eyes closed, then I'm not gonna stock it because I'm doing a lot more cakes now. So it's a lot easier for me to do a cake 
because as most of you know, cake is obviously higher profit. So um, if I can make three cakes in a day, then I'm gonna get a lot more profit than if I make a load of brownies. So that's why I'm trying to move away. Like I've taken Blondies off my website and Etsy just because they were always, like I never just, I never liked them as much. Um, I always had good reviews from people, but I personally don't like Blondies, but people like them, but it's just easier for me to go, right, I've got to make 20 brownies today, rather than I've got to make some brownies, I've got to make some blondies, I've got to make some cookies. It just gets very confusing. So especially when you're trying to kind of like limit what you're doing, it's a lot easier to just do cakes and then a few favorites. And like brownies are my favorite, so I'm obviously always gonna do those. I don't really do cupcakes anymore. Um, partly because a lot of the bakers in my area do them so I feel like I don't need to do them because someone can go elsewhere and then I can like focus on doing cakes because that's what I prefer anyway um but yeah because it's a lot easier for me to just focus on doing cakes than it is to do like 500 different things I used to want to do loads like I don't really do cake pops anymore I do them on cakes but I don't do them just like to sell because again they're so time consuming and they don't make that much like if they're I don't know, like £2.50 or £3 each. That's not very much. So um, we've got a lot going on in here. So it's very loud. I apologise. I'm boiling the kettle as well. Um, so yes, I don't know if anyone else has that dilemma. But I'm just like, I just want to make as many cakes as possible. And I'd prefer to do more cakes than um, little things. And it means I can do more lives, all that kind of thing. Because... That's why I've been doing so many lives, because um, I can do a lot more on YouTube, say, um, than I can if I was doing brownies. Um, it's incredible what a one hour plan trip can vary, what the price is for a cake over here. Um, you can get a cake for next to nothing where you would pay more for two trays um of brownies yeah it's i don't really kind of like believe in different pricing for different areas because from what i've seen and plenty of um like bakers will agree like maybe bigger ones potentially um that might have just been in the industry a bit longer but i personally think that if someone is willing to pay for your cake they will travel so I've had people come from London and do two hour round, like two hours to get to me and then two hours back. Um, and then I've, I've got one in a few weeks where I'm delivering it and it's an hour and 15 away. Um, and they're paying for that delivery cost because obviously that is my time and they're happy to pay that because they would rather have me do it than have someone that's nearer. Um, and I just think you should stick to your one pricing like charge what you want to charge don't necessarily base it off of your area because it's if the people in your area don't want to pay then people outside of it will pay um like obviously in the beginning it's kind of difficult to do that because you want to get the orders so you don't necessarily want to um like up your pricing because then you might risk not getting the orders but at the same time a lot of situations people will travel um so yeah, I mean, I get a lot of people from Aylesbury. Um, so I think from what I've seen, I don't really look at other people in my area, but from what I've seen, I get quite a lot of people that are acquaintances. So like I know of them, but I don't actually know them in my area. And then a lot of other people get a lot of smaller orders, um, things like cupcakes, brownies, um, donuts, stuff like that. Um, but they don't get so many cakes. So I think it depends. But like I say, people in my area come to me, but then I also do get people outside of that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell yourself short, basically. Like if you think you're worth more, but you think people in your area won't pay it, still put that as your price because you might find that people will pay it. Um, so... It's difficult. Pricing is always very difficult. But like I say, I don't really believe in 
charging less for certain areas because if your skill is just as good as mine and I'm charging more then I don't think that you should be charging less because your work is just as good just because you live say in Weymouth like by the beach which is typically a lot of people I have spoken to say that it's meant to be cheaper there because their wages are usually less but it goes it goes the same like as what I'm saying like if your skill is just as good then you shouldn't have to charge less just because of where you live so yeah that's my little little rant over but um yeah just charge what you want don't worry about what people think as long as it's like an educated price and you haven't just like plucked it out of thin air then it's fine um so yes my our chocolate is melted I'm just mixing it right that's all melted um i need to make my tea so i'm gonna plonk you there there we go um Right, I'm just making a quick tea because I could really do with it. I haven't had dinner, which I'm terrible for. Um, and it's nine o'clock, so I need to make something afterwards. So. Right. Bear with, let me get the chocolate and then I will answer that one. So, for example, how much would you charge for a four inch cake? So, all the mess in the background. Um, showing myself up there we go um so my four inch drip cakes they start from and this basically is a drip cake that has a covered board and it has basic chocolates if you want anything like macaroons if you want a cake topper if you want flowers all of that is extra so this is just a simple drip cake with some chocolates on it and that is from 50 pounds and that is a four inch cake um and then six inch is from 60 and eight inches from 70 and like i say that doesn't include any major extras um things like those card pieces that i've got today they were extra on top um yeah it depends like the qpr ones that i printed obviously i print them so they're cheaper so what i did is i swapped some chocolates for the card and she was happy with that because she didn't want loads of chocolates on it um so it just depends like sometimes you can kind of like switch things out but like i say that's like my starting prices and that's like no less than that basically unless it's a shorter cake um then it's not any cheaper i managed to get water in here um Yeah, I don't, I don't typically do um, shorter cakes because it's just easier for me. Like I know that I fill four tins with mix and it makes it the right height. But if someone does want a shorter one, then I just knock off a little bit um, because it's not something that I do every day. So it's very difficult to kind of like put a set price on it. And I also don't want to advertise that I do shorter cakes. So it's more that if someone actually requests to have it shorter, but um, that's the only reason it would be less in price. Most of the time they're just set. So one, two, three, four. We have four. I think, because what I did last time was painted them on and I didn't like that, the black. So I'm gonna fill the little sections with black chocolate and then hopefully it works. So. Oh, 
black. Um, do you regret anything when you first started and how did you get yourself out there? Um, bear with, I need a spoon and then I'll answer that. Um, Right, I'm back. So, um, I would say that I don't regret too much. Um, I regret some of my pricing. Some of it was absolutely dire. Um, like, ridiculously low for the amount of work. Um, I once did a two-tier cake. My first two-tier cake I did. Let's have a see if you can guess how much it was. Bearing in mind it was ridiculously low. I didn't make any money on it. It had flowers on it and it was a six inch and an eight inch. And it was lovely. It looked like a wedding cake, but it wasn't. It was just for his partner's birthday. Um, and it was like a white cake and it was really, really pretty. But guess how much it was. Have a little guess in the comments because I want to see if anyone can like go as low um, as it was. Um... But yeah, bearing in mind the ingredients for a two-tier cake is approximately maybe like £30. That's just the ingredients. And then there's boxes. There's also my time on top of that, which should have been like £8 an hour at least, if even if it was minimum wage. So have a little, have a little guess. Let's get a few more and then I will um, put you all at ease. Right, we've got some that are high, some that are low. So, it was a whopping £25. <laughs> £25. I felt so bad asking for £25. Like, I literally, I was like, 20, he was like, how much? And I was like, 25 And I was thinking that was really expensive. And it wasn't, because now, if I made that cake again, I'd be charging at least... 80 to 90 and that's because it was a short two tier but I wouldn't have made it that short so if I did it now it would be 100 pounds so yeah I made no money on that so that was lovely um and that was like I think it was the first cake I did that wasn't like family that's why I was so worried about charging but yeah that was absolutely dire so we won't be doing that again so Right, we're going to go with a very dark grey because the chocolate will seize if I add any more colouring to it. And it will darken once it's in the fridge, so you only need a teeny bit. Um, right, back to the question. So yeah, very cheap cake and just um, not so much regret, but I wish I'd refined my work a bit more. Um, I managed to do that from January. I just like stopped taking on certain things and then started taking on other things that I actually wanted to do. And then I found that that's actually when I was like enjoying it more and I was getting more orders because people were like, right, I can see a style of cake in the ones that you make. Whereas I was just making like anything. I was doing a lot of cupcakes and a lot of brownies and not very many cakes. And I obviously enjoy doing cakes a lot more. So, <coughs> um, don't worry, I haven't, I'm not actually ill, but I just need a drink because I have the driest mouth from all this talking. Um, so that is kind of what I regret, but I don't really regret anything because I regret not starting YouTube earlier. So I was doing YouTube like years ago, um, maybe like two years ago now, but I didn't actually start putting baking stuff on there until November. And I was obviously baking in May. So I wish I'd done that a bit earlier, but apart from that, I don't really regret anything. I don't regret much if I'm completely honest. Like, I try not to regret anything that I do in just like life in general. So, um, how did you get yourself out there? Honestly, just posting loads on Instagram, posting loads on YouTube, and that was it. Um, advice on building a Wix site 
looks good on mobile do you design it between the two lines um i do but there's also certain things where like i don't really mind how it looks on mobile because from what i've seen because you can see what people view your website on a lot of the time people view it on a desktop so i'm not too worried um someone's just asked me to make a cake for tomorrow evening and unfortunately i'm at a wedding until like 3 p.m tomorrow so i'm not gonna be able to um that's annoying um yeah i won't be able to do that that is sad i would like to do that um managed to join you on a live hi catherine um has anyone ever asked you to draw a cake um they haven't specifically asked me to however when i'm trying to give them an envision because a lot of the time people will say do what you want so what i do is i send them a lot of different things and i say right we're going to do a mix of all this so sometimes if i have time and i'm not super busy then I will draw it up because then it just makes it easier for them to envisage because they can look at it and go, okay, I've got a rough idea of what you're going on about. Half the time, I probably just sound crazy because I'm like, right, we're going to take this from this, this from this, and it will look great. And they're like, okay. Um, I always use unsalted butter in my buttercream, but some people find it too sweet. I tried salted butter today, but I can taste the salt. Do you add more flavoring? Yes. So I've never been able to taste the salt. Um, I have you. I used unsalted literally once. I did it once, and one of my family were like, "These are really sweet cupcakes." And then I was like, "Right." And then I just changed to salted straight away. Um, but I add maybe like one to two teaspoons of flavoring. Um, I use two if I'm doing two blocks of butter, one if I'm doing one block of butter, if that makes sense. Um, if it's vanilla, then I don't add as much because the vanilla is quite strong. But if it's something like today, it's lemon. So it needs to be strong, like you need to be able to taste it. it you don't want it to be like really, really subtle where you can't taste it. So yeah, it just depends really. Um, right. Let's see how this goes. Where's the other one? So I'm using a piping bag to fill the different areas because obviously it's a lot easier than trying to... Oh, I shouldn't have done the middle one. This is very, very fiddly. Okay, we're gonna hope that that looks fine when we take it out. So we're just gonna fill that. There we go. So I'm going to fill these a little bit now that I've done the center. Just to kind of like cover that. Um, small piping bags are from eBay. I buy so much stuff from eBay. I love it. It's easy, it comes quick. Like most of the stuff has three day delivery. Um, where do you get your football mold from? I have a Chelsea FC cake to do in a few weeks, so I think that mold will be useful. Um, it is. Amazon. I love Amazon again. I ha We have Amazon Prime, so I use it all the time when I forget stuff. And then it comes the next day. Okay. 
I'm hoping this works. Because I've made these before, but I painted the um, the black on. But then I found that if you like touched it, then the paint would transfer. Whereas obviously, because this is chocolate, it should set with all the other chocolate. So then it means that it can't like wipe off or anything. Right, fingers crossed. So we're gonna just fill them. And then we're gonna do the drip. Right, freezer time. Okay, there's no space in there, so I'm gonna go in here. It's because I need a flat surface and like in my freezer, because I've got bags in there, it's never a flat surface, but I managed to kind of like wangle it into working um, because yeah, obviously they need to be flat. Um, I love your accent. I don't think I have one, do I? Oh my God, don't look at my hair from the back. We went for a walk and I pulled a hoodie over my head and I think I just pulled my whole bun out. Um, where did you get your small piping bag from? Answered that one, um, eBay. Um, hi Amy, I'm so late, I'll have to catch up. Hi Natalie. Right, we are going to, um, we're gonna melt our white chocolate spread. So, come with me. So it's 9.15, so we're doing pretty, pretty good. Um, I need to turn this again. There we go. So yeah, 9.15. Um, we just need to do the drip, which will take 10 minutes. The footballs are made. We've got to cut out those bits, which we'll do, um, we'll do that in between somewhere. So we should probably finish by 10, which is good. Um, hi, I missed the last two lives, but <laughs> I'm all caught up. Um, I, I know I've been doing a lot of lives, so there's a lot to catch up on. I don't normally do this many, so we're usually all right. So, um, we're just melting the white chocolate spread and then we'll be doing the drip on the cake. So if anyone's just joined, please bear with, we will get back to the cake in a minute. Um, right, that needs mixing. So it is a white drip, which is nice because then you don't have to actually color it, which is always nice. Um, so I'm melting in the jar just cause it's easy. Cause then you can just put it back in your cupboard. Um, so I'm just mixing so you get like it all like at the bottom and the top because the top will melt quicker than the bottom and then it means that we can put it in for another like 15 seconds i usually do it for 20 because it's a spread and then do another like 15 and then it's really nice and runny right 
there we go perfect so let's go right um it is drip time thank you there there we go there you go right we're going to use it from the jar because there's no point in pouring it out because it's white so we can just use it out of the jar um, right, so we're going to use a spatula today, I think. I'm feeling, feeling using a spatula because the cake that we were recreating has more of a like rough drip, so just pour until you think it's enough. And then we're just gonna just push it over the edge. There we go. Right. So, we need to decide where the front is. There's a little pocket hole with there, which is going to annoy me, but I can cover that with something. Um, a little, like, air hole. Um, okay, well, we're going to go with where the air hole is, because... That's the most like central bit, I think. So, um, we're done with spread. So, uh, did you have a nice birthday? What were your thoughts on your sponge after you'd frozen it? I find sponge out the freezer is so moist. Um, what am I doing? Sprinkles, bear with. I'm actually considering asking Sprinkler UK for a sponsorship because I use them in every live. So I think I might email them and be like, can you sponsor me? Because I always use you. Um, but we're using the white rods, the gold rods, the indigo pearls, the large white pearls, and then we have the small white pearls which these are just my fave and I've had this bag for so long. Like I've literally, this is, this lasts a few good few months, which is always nice. So, um, and they just go with everything. So white. So my birthday was absolutely lovely. Thank you for asking. Um, so on my actual birthday, because we had the party a few days before with all my family, um, obviously on my actual birthday, I didn't see them because it was a Wednesday. So like everyone's busy on a weekday. So what we did is we went to Rococo. So if you don't know what that is, it's like Rococo lounge and they have a whole vegan menu. So I was loving life. Um, and it was really good. I had the moving mountains hot dog and it was absolutely giant. Um, so I ate, I actually think I finished it. Um, but it was a lot, like it was a lot and it was vegan. So that's always nice. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Um, I had macaroni cheese as my side and then you get fries with it as well. So it was really good. And now I'm back on to eating healthy. Um, so yeah, it was a lovely birthday. Um, 
I I got this really cute bag from my mum, which I will have to try and show you. Like I'll try and remember I'll try and remember for the um, end of life, but it's really cute. She hand um, embroidered it for me, and it is the cutest thing. So it's cake related, so I'll try and remember to show you at the end. Um, I am dropping these sprinkles everywhere. Where's the front? Right, so that's the white ones done. So, um, what were your thoughts on the frozen sponge? It was gorgeous. Like, I've never tried a frozen sponge. And to be fair, unless I'm super, super busy, I probably wouldn't. Um, but it was very good to be able to, like, try it out and see how it worked. But, yeah, absolutely loved it. Um turn out perfectly it was chocolate orange and it was so good um but yeah so that was good because it all worked out well um but yeah it means that if i needed to freeze it for like a family cake then i could because i know that it works um What was the next one? How long can sponge be kept frozen for? I would love to know that because I've got no idea. Mine was frozen for a week, um, so I wasn't worried about it, but I would be intrigued to know how long you can freeze it for. When you heat the spread, do you put it, put it back in the cupboard or throw it away? Um, as long as you don't like burn it, then you can just put it back in the cupboard and it will go back to be in a spread. Um, yeah, it just kind of heats it up. That's why you have to do it in 20 seconds. And then I, once I've done 20 seconds, I don't do more than like 12 to 15 seconds because otherwise you don't want to burn it um, because then you can't like put it back in the cupboard because it will be like lumpy. But as long as it's nice and like, like runny, then I think it's fine. Um, and I know lots of bakers do that and never had any issues. So yeah, I think as long as it's not lumpy. So yeah, just don't burn it. Um, and also it doesn't break out of like because you're not heating it above a certain temperature because you're only doing it for short bursts it's a bit like the tempering like it doesn't break out of that whereas like like i say if you burn it then it's not going to go back to that spread consistency um you can freeze cakes up to a week before icing them yeah i left mine I think, oh no, it wasn't a week. I did a cake, oh no, it was. I did a cake on the 5th um, of, what do you call it? Um, August. I did a cake on the 5th of August and my birthday was on the 14th or 15th. So it was in there, what is that, like 10 days? And it was amazing, like it tasted so good um you can keep sponges frozen for up to three months if wrapped correctly yeah i did cling film put it in foil and then i put it in another layer of cling film so it was like really, really um it shelf life is extended to six months maybe more if temperatures kept at a steady um zero degrees um uh, best to consume the cake within two months um yes all good tips guys thank you i need to wash my hands because i got icing art on them um, and then we're going to do piping on the top. Right, so, because one, because I've got loads of blue, and two, because the drip is white, we're going to do blue on the top. Um, so... Where is my nozzle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where have I put that? 
looking for my nozzle as usual. Here we go. Um, it is the 2D that we're using. I'm actually thinking about stocking these on my website because I bought a load of them because it's the same supplier that does my silicone moulds and it's my favourite nozzle so um, I might start selling it on the because I've got like 30 of them. Um, what is going on with the feed? Apologies. I've got loads of Wi-Fi, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but hopefully it sorts itself out. Right. so much biscoff spread because I've taken out more than I need and then threw the rest away um like I say anything that doesn't need coloring don't take it out the jar so like this unless you're putting it in a piping bag um which I guess as long as it hasn't touched anything you could put it back in the jar but I'd be worried that like it might contaminate like if you've touched that cream or something um but if you're doing it out the jar then you're just using a spoon and the spoon doesn't touch the cake I pour it onto the cake so the spoon is fine going back into the jar so um uh, okay quality is better um so yeah I would say if it, you're not coloring it don't take it out the jar um do you find when you keep buttercream in the fridge it gets loads of condensation over it or do you think I have a problem with the temperature in my fridge I would say that's a problem with your fridge I used to get that with the old fridge, which is why I had to start using the new one. Um, I like know it's pretty quick because I have temperature thermometers in there. So like, I could literally tell that day, I was like, right, there's some issues with this. So then I just started keeping all my cakes in my parents' fridge. Um, but I have little thermometers, so here you go. So it's currently three and a half in there, and this is just a little thermometer that I have. So, so that one is just off eBay. So again, you can just get it off eBay, and it takes a couple of days to come, and then you just shove it in the fridge, and then you can know whether your fridge temperature is like off or not. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't get condensation. That usually means it's too cold. Right, we're using the 2D and we're just going to pipe around the top. I'm going to try and like contain this bit here because I don't want it to... What is going on? Have I... Oh, there we go. So the front is there and then I'm going to pipe a little bit onto the board because um, it's a covered board but we've also got some white to go on the board. With this I'm just like winging it, there's no like right or wrong, I literally just do a few swirls and various other things and do whatever looks good. Um, right. I need my other nozzle. It's a little 
knows I wasn't looking here. Yeah. This is all my washing up from earlier. We're using the Wilton 32, Wilton 32, and it just looks like that. It's like a star nozzle. Is the quality still bad, or is it just my iPad? Because obviously I'm running off of my Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's so bad today. My Wi-Fi says that it's got five, five bars, four bars. So I don't know why it's bad. I'm just adding a little bit of the Wilton white to my buttercream. This is for the board, so it's the leftover from the crumb coat. And because it's for the board, it doesn't matter if it has like the odd crumb in it. Like, you know, I mean, you can't actually tell. There's like literally one or two crumbs in there, but I can't use it on the main coat because if it happens that those crumbs are visible, then it doesn't look as nice, but so yeah, what I've done is used it for the crumb coat and then any leftovers I can then put on the board. So, um, I missed when everyone was sharing their baking Instagram. Mine is this, um, if anyone wants to follow. I still need to go through the birthday live, so apologies if anyone is waiting. There's a few people that I noticed or like remembered from the live, so I could then go and I could then follow them when they followed me. But um, yeah, I need to actually go and follow people from that. There we go. So that is the that's the front. That's the front. There we go. So let me get a pen. Oh, that's silver. That's not going to work because it's silver board. Blue. I mean, that doesn't make much of a difference. Right, we're just gonna start putting stuff on it and then it means that if I forget where the front is, it doesn't matter. So, 
we're just gonna go in and add some more sprinkles around the board. And then we're gonna give it a quick blast in the fridge while I quickly cut the bits out because I haven't done that yet. So. Go wash my hands quickly and then I will be back. any questions now is the best time I am just going to be cutting out these bits um, the cake is looking fab love the color thank you Catherine Is anyone else seeing it blurry or hazy? Yeah, I think there's an issue with either my Wi-Fi or other people's Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's happening. Apologies. Um, yeah, my Wi-Fi says that it's got four bars, so I don't know why, why it's doing that. going to move a few bits out of the way so that I can like get to everything. say that American buttercream is too sweet has anyone else experienced that I would say that that's your butter and um, we were talking about this a little bit earlier um I think 
using salted butter. I prefer it and I find that it's not a sickly. Um, I never really used um, unsalted. I used it once or twice and I thought it was way too sweet. Um, could it be my ratio that's making it too sweet? I would say that it's just the butter because the problem is even if you use less butter, it's probably, um, it will mean that your buttercream is very, very stiff. So uh, you use salted, that's really interesting. Unless it's your flavouring, what flavouring do you use? Like, is it branded or... I use um, vanilla essence rather than extract. It's more watery and it's um, it's the Dr. Onka one, like, still, but it doesn't come in the little bottle because I find that the little bottle one is sweeter. Um, so I use... Where is it? Um... Oh. This is what I use, vanilla flavouring, and see it's all watery, so I find it's not as, um, like, I don't know what the word is, like sickly. Um, what ratio of butter to powdered sugar do you use? Yeah, what ratio do you use, or are you asking me? Um, if it's me, then it's usually um, 500 grams of butter and then 750 so it's one to one and a half oh yeah that's the same as me um yeah sometimes one one for the last coat if it needs it it depends because like for what i just did that like um tie dye it needs to be nice and smooth and also for like stripes it needs to be nice and like soft because if it's too stiff then you'll get lots of air bubbles and you don't want that for stripes so it really just depends like what design you're doing. If you're just doing a standard coat, then I would do one to one and a half. Do you make your own edible toppers? Um, I don't, um, as it works out so expensive ordering them. Um, so these ones, I think I've actually ordered other things from her. So these aren't edible. These are just printed. So what I do, is I make sure that the back of it is in the buttercream and then it means that you're not like contaminating but I've seen plenty of people um and I've never like seen anything wrong with it using card not edible um I think as long as you haven't got the ink like all in the buttercream that they're going to be eating so I try and like lay it so that the back of it is in the buttercream and the front of it isn't um or if it's on the board then typically people don't eat the buttercream on the board so then you don't have to worry as much but um yeah those ones aren't edible these ones are however because these are going to be going like on it and um yeah and they wanted those edible but it was a bit blurry but here you go hopefully you can see it a bit better And then it's sprinkles and toppers. So yeah, um, we need to cut these now. Uh, it could be my brand of butter. I use Tesco salted, that's the same as me. I use Tesco's and I think it's really good. Um, so. Oh, these are really funny because it's sugar paper. I use Western Star, I'm in, I'm in Australia. Oh yeah, forgot about that. Um, yeah, you probably don't have a Tesco's. Tesco's there. Because I think they look really cheesy 
Um, but we're using the little shuttlecocks. And then we've got a little man playing badminton as well as some badminton rackets. that non-edible paper curls when on the buttercream this isn't paper this is card so yeah i definitely find that paper curls so this is card and as you can see it's a bit like stiffer i recommend using card Right, shuttlecocks are done. Now we need to do the little rackets. The little man is going to be a bit more complicated. Um, you also use lure pack. Yeah, I sometimes use Lurpak, but it's more if the Tesco's one isn't available. Typically, I find that the Tesco's one is, like, really good. Um, thank you for the tips on toppers, Amy. I'll also check out the seller you've bought the edible ones from. Yeah, it's called Sprinkles and Toppers, if you couldn't see, because I know that it's a little bit blurry. So, you might not have been able to actually read it, but, um, yeah, Sprinkles and Toppers. And like I say, they were real. They were on eBay, and she was, or he, I don't actually know. Um, they were really quick posting them, and they came in like two days, which for eBay is very quick. eBay can sometimes take like weeks to come. So, I've just cut the first little badminton. I'm going to leave it like that, where it's got this little triangle here, just because I think it's going to help it stand up. So I'm going to do that with all of them. So, we've done the other one, and then these are what the little shuttlecocks look like. They're very light. You can see it in person, but not so much on the camera, so you can see. And then we've got one more of these, and then we're on to the little men, which are a bit more detailed. saves me cutting it out um we have that and yes it's pricey um or do you get stains on the paper for from the buttercream um i do if it's paper but i find the card doesn't soak up 
the buttercream at all and also it depends if you've got it in the fridge like i put all my card bits on at the last minute and then shove it in the fridge so i think the fridge stops it from transferring i'm not really sure if i'm honest it's just um my luck maybe i don't know so I cut out the little man with the racket and then I'm just going to do the same. I've done it, like I say, so that there's a bit of a a base. Like, I don't think you want to really like cut around them too much because otherwise when it goes in the buttercream, it's not going to be able to stand up as easy. you like about the tesco so i can look for something similar um honestly it's nothing like too specific it's just that it's the cheapest um that they sell in tesco's but it's also the same price as two of the other branded ones so it's not like it's a value one and it's like the cheapest option there are ones that are the same price but because it's tesco's it's like i know tesco's brand Whereas like other things that aren't Tesco's, I don't necessarily know if they're good. Um, so yeah, it's just easy. And also Tesco's are always going to have it because that's another thing. Like it's being able to find it. Whereas Tesco's are always going to have their own product. Whereas if they run out of stock of something that isn't Tesco's branded, it's more likely that they're going to be out of stock for longer. So um, yeah, I always find that it's easier to actually source um so yeah it's like you could go to a tesco's and know it's there whereas if i was buying say Lurpak, i might go to a tesco's i might go to a sainsbury's and i don't know if they're gonna have it because they're different stores so it's it's easy in that sense but and it just mixes well like i've never had any issues with it i've literally used it since i started baking last year and never had any issues with it so it's sort of thing where it's like if if it's not broke don't fix it so because i've never had any issues i never felt the need to change it i've only ever bought Lurpak if there was like none in stock or if i went to somewhere that wasn't a tesco's so that's the only reason i've ever bought anything other than that right so there isn't much chocolate going on it because they've got obviously a lot of these like cutouts which i've now finished cutting out um so she said just do whatever so we've got little t-shirts which are little football t-shirts so i'm just gonna go standard because it's easy like you know they're gonna like it sort of thing um whereas if you go a bit like too imaginative for chocolate some people don't like certain things but they said just put whatever so i'm just gonna go with buttons and then i've got a dairy milk bar which i'm gonna break up into like little pieces and then we have dairy milk fingers because again they're like not flavoursome in any way, whereas I wouldn't want to use like chocolate orange because I don't know if they like chocolate orange. So whenever someone says, unless they say, do whatever you want, I like every single chocolate, then I go simple if they haven't specifically said anything. Um, so we have our little t-shirts, which I'm hoping have firmed up a bit. I only did these this evening, so they haven't had um, as much time to harden as they usually would. I need... Right, the end is near. So all we have to do is put these little bits on and then we are done. So I'm gonna put the t-shirts back over here just to save space. So. Right.
so the buttercream is not too hard so that's good right um i'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna start packing everything on So that's the front. So I'm going to start with these big bits because I want to make sure that they can be like fitted on there. I might not need all of these, but I always do. I always do um, more because I'd rather have more. Um, so we've got the little t-shirts as well. I need the buttercream to soften a little bit because it's a little bit hard. Not hard enough for chocolate, but hard enough for like paper, which is very delicate. how they turned out and I did the black in chocolate this time so it wouldn't um smudge because I just found that it smudged when I not when I touched it so basically I cling film um I use cellophane now but where I have the box lid like that I cellophane over the front and I found that the cellophane touched the ball and then the black started to come off which obviously I didn't want to smudge so this way it can't smudge basically so, the t-shirts are a little bit soft, but I can kind of like lean it. Do you find working late makes your mind too active to sleep? I'm usually awake like a light bulb if I work late. Um, no. So I am one of those people where my mind goes a thousand miles an hour throughout the day. And then as soon as I lay down, as long as I've been busy all day, which if I haven't been busy, then I can't sleep. So I kind of have to find a good balance. Um, but I find that I just crash basically where I've been so active throughout the day that I've kind of like used all my energy and then I go to bed and I just crash. So I quite like working late. Like I don't like working after midnight. Um, I try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, but I don't mind working until midnight because then it means that I sleep really well. So I'm one of those people that burns a candle at both ends, um, which is terrible, but has to be done. Um, so we're going to go football there these little edible things are so cute um we're gonna go little man can you see there we go
thank you, Catherine. That's very, very sweet. Um, I'm just going to add a few sprinkles and then it's pretty much done. Um, oh, that just completely rolled off. There we go. So, um, I'm just going to add a couple of chocolate fingers just in a few gaps on the board, but nothing on the top because that's done. But there's just a few gaps around the back, so I just do it to fill those. So... Right. So it's got badminton on it, it's got football on it, which was the brief. So I think we're done. Perfect. And it's ten oh five. That's what I like to see. So um, let me do a little show for you guys. Apologies if it's blurry. I assume that if you watch back, it will be better quality later on. Um, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy off of the board. So, um, that's the back. It's just like a few bits around the board. And then let me gently turn it so this is the front is that right yeah so we've got footballs we've got t-shirts we've got qpr on there we've got badminton little edible bits and then we have a lot more around the front just because the back doesn't need to be like i don't like to do no decoration at the back because people will see it but i don't feel the need to do loads so as you can see there's a few bits of chocolate around the back just to fill it and like a t-shirt on the sides um but most of the decoration is like here so yes that is the finished finished cake so i hope you enjoyed i'm going to shove this in the fridge before i drop it So that is going tomorrow morning while I'm at a wedding. So I need to box it up quickly before I go to bed. Um, I'm hoping to be in bed at half 10. Um, so yeah, I think I need to, I need to wash my hair um, for the wedding tomorrow. I'm doing hair and makeup with my sister. So um, yes, it's an early one. We're leaving at 6 a.m. Um, to be there for eight, it's two hours away. Um, and then we get back at like 2 p.m. I think so it's a very long day so I need lots of sleep tonight um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed uh, great job thank you Natalie looks amazing thank you Susie thank you Catherine all very lovely comments so I'm gonna love you and leave you I'm gonna sort out my barnet um and then i'm gonna go to bed um there will i'm planning to have a new podcast on sunday i know that i've missed two weeks i've just been so busy um like i always say i always prioritize youtube over the podcast because the podcast one it's not a um like priority in terms of like my audience obviously a lot of people watch me on youtube so i'd rather put out lives and videos then do the podcast if I have to pick one. So um, yeah, I was really busy, so I haven't had a chance and it takes a lot of editing. So I'm gonna try and get one done for this Sunday and then we will see. I'm just gonna do them as and when, not put too much pressure on it, but it will always be a Sunday. Um, but it might just be that I miss the odd week if I'm too busy. So yes, um, if you haven't already, I just remembered, I completely forgot. I'm like the worst person for advertising ever. Um, but the new merch is out. So there will be photos of the new merch 
probably Sunday now because I'm out all day tomorrow. Um, but there should be um, photos of the actual merch printed, if that makes sense, because uh, we'll be doing a merch shoot over the next like two weeks, maybe. I'm again super busy, so I need to try and organise it with my brother who photographs it all. Um, so we're going to try and do a little photo shoot for it again. But all the new designs are out on the website. There's scrunchies as well, which I make myself. So there's it's like a sprinkle fabric. Um, it's really, really cute. So that's a new thing that's on the website. You can get standard size and then there will be extra large ones coming, which are going to be like giant scrunchies, basically. And then there's also resin coasters coming. Uh, they're like sprinkle coasters and they are, again, the cutest thing. Again, made by me. I always make it myself because I don't like to... Um, like apart from like silicone molds, which I literally can't make myself, I don't like to sell something that I could make myself because I'd rather make it myself and then you know that I've made it. So yeah, um, those are again going to be listed on Sunday, but I just wanted to get the bulk of the merch on there. So like the clothing and then um, the scrunchies is on there. And then the resin and the extra large scrunchie will go up on Sunday. So then you can buy those. Sunday, the sale ends at midnight. So if you want to buy anything on the website, um, I it won't be linked down below yet because this is live. But if you go to sweetthingsbyamy.co.uk or if you go to my channel page, then you can go to my website from there. Then you can see all the stuff that I have on there. It's a site-wide sale so it's on everything so you can literally get anything you want um so yes you need to order by sunday if you want the sale and it's 18 percent off because my birthday is on the 18th um so i thought that that made sense um so yeah 18th of august is my birthday and you've got 18 percent off so be sure to go and make some purchases anyone that's purchased already it will be posted on monday um because that's the next postal day. So everyone that's waiting for their stuff, it will be Monday. Um, because that's when I'm next free. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And hit the bell to be notified about my lives in the future. Because otherwise you will not know. Um, and you don't want to turn up late. So I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you later. Bye.